Det var ikke. I guess we're live now. Um, so welcome everyone for our weekly live stream on Twitch. Uh, we're excited today to have one of our machine learning experts in this live stream. Um, it's Anuel, uh, who is going to talk about fraud detection and machine learning using Hazelcast. Um, so welcome, Ed. Um, it's good to have you here uh, on this live stream. Um, maybe be a bit, a little bit of background about your experience, and you know, when you joined Hazelcast and the machine learning side of using Hazelcast. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Fawaz. So yeah, I joined the company about three months ago, uh, but before that, and for the best part of the last decade, I've been working in product management of AI and machine learning related products or platforms. So I did a fair amount of time with Salesforce and as part of the Salesforce Einstein team. And more recently, I work at Redis uh, as one of the senior AI machine learning PMs. So what excites me about uh, AI machine learning opportunity with Hazelcast is that combination of core technologies that are needed for real-time machine learning. So looking forward to talking a little bit more about it in the context of fraud detection today. That's good. So outside work and outside Hazelcast, any interests or hobbies? I guess I have a 15 year old, so uh, he keeps me busy. So I'm a transport for him. <laughs> no, uh, I enjoy tennis, traveling and heavy music, heavy rock. So, yeah, that, that's great. So just to remind everyone, we are actually going to have questions live on the Twitch. So feel free to leave your questions in the chat box below. Um, I will take these questions and forward it to Ed. And just to remind everyone, we will launch our community event in March in, in London on the 9th of March. So this will be a hybrid event. So if you're in London or in the UK, feel free to register as in person. Uh, otherwise, feel free to register as a virtual. Uh, we will have a training workshop. And upon completing this workshop, you will get uh, a badge on completing, and then we will have a roundtable discussion about real-time stream processing. So the link will be here, and I will post it in the chat box uh, in, on Twitch. And with that being said, uh, I will hand it over to you, Ed. Excellent. Thanks, Fawaz. Let me know when you see, you can see my slides. Yes. Brilliant. So, um. So today, the agenda for today is to set the context and talk about machine learning and fraud detection and how we, uh, how it can be done with Hazelcast and how it's done today, most importantly. Uh, fraud detection is nothing new, so companies are implementing that today. There are some ways in, in which companies are doing it, and hopefully after uh, this talk, uh, I'll give you some insights into what it takes to implement this in, with Hazelcast. We'll be looking at some code. Uh, in the fraud detection pipeline and what that means. And, and we'll finish with a demo uh, of how to implement a fraud detection pipeline, which is machine learning in Hazelcast. So that's broadly the agenda uh, for today. Uh, credit card fraud, it, it cost the industry in 2020 about $28 billion. Uh, um, this was the year of the pandemic. More, uh, a lot of us, uh, as we got home uh, and started to use more our credit products, there was a significantly increase in use and also a significant increase in 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 fraud. As we came out of the, the pandemic and the new uh, reality of the cost of living crisis, crisis, it, it means that a lot more of us are applying for short term. Uh, credit products and or even credit cards. So the use will continue to increase. And with that, the uh, the opportunity for fraudsters to, to, to take action on that will also increase. Uh, the industry estimates that uh, by the end of 2031 and from 2021 to 2031, 
uh, $408 billion will be lost to car fraud. The majority of this uh, happening is expected to happen in the US. So it's, it's definitely a, a growing problem, but let's look at, uh, let's look at what it takes to stop and check for fraud. You know, from the moment you swipe that card to the moment that you get uh, the client or the proof, your transaction, we're talking uh, milliseconds. A lot of that time is taken in just the, uh, the, the network transit uh, of taking the card details, getting into the card processing infrastructure. So by the time we get to the car, car processing infrastructure, we have a very tiny amount of time in which to do a fraud detection pipeline. This pipeline usually starts with taking the transaction and very minimal information about the, that transaction, perhaps a credit card number, um, an amount, a date. And with that information, the card processing infrastructure need to enrich that. So mapping that credit card number to, an, to a customer, that merchant code into a merchant. And so this provides the context to that transaction. Once you have that context, then the machine learning can start happening. And at this point, once we have all of the features from merchant card and all of the entities involved in this transaction, we can start transforming that data to make use of a, uh, of a fraud detection machine learning algorithm to, to calculate a, a probability of fraud. Once we have that probability of fraud, then it's the, uh, the card processing provider to decide if that probability is high enough to grant uh, a stop in the transaction or just let it through. Now, if we optimize, if we had a system that could optimize the execution of this pipeline, what we gain is that we can reduce the amount of time in which we do this pipeline. And what it gives us is more time. So if we can reduce the amount of time that this pipeline takes, perhaps we could do a little bit, more, some more checks. And, and this is what we gain with a system like, like Hazelcast, is that ability to optimize and minimize that time to run the machine learning, which allows you then to, you know, time to approve, to, to, to run further checks or to run further machine learning algorithms and, and apply the business logic that you want. So all we're doing is in that tiny amount of time, trying to optimize that fraud processing pipeline. So next I want to go and walk you through a little bit more detail of what this fraud detection pipeline actually entails. So as I mentioned, as the transaction comes in, there is very, very minimal information, credit card number, an amount, merchant code, may have some information about the device or point of sale, uh, some information about the geolocation where that transaction is happening. So very, very minimal amount of information is, is available at this point. Second step is about contextualizing that transaction is with that credit card number, I can identify the customer that it relates to. And once I can identify the customer, I can get details, data, features about that customer, job, city, age group, uh, recent pattern of transactions, et cetera. And the same with merchants and in addition, you can also calculate real-time features. So if I have geolocation data where that transaction is taking place, I can compare that to the billing address of the customer and calculate the distance from home that uh, that, that transaction is taking place. So that could be a, a, an interesting feature for a machine learning model, for example. So once I have all of those, those features, then is when the machine learning actually starts. We need to transform that data and apply feature engineering to transform that data into an, an input, into a, a numerical format that uh, a machine learning model will require to, to be able to calculate uh, anything, any, any fraud uh, probability. Once that data is transformed, the next step is actually executing that fraud detection uh, machine learning model. And here, uh, there's, there's a wide variety of, of technologies that serve a machine learning model. Right? So, and data scientists use a wide range of frameworks to implement uh, these uh, machine learning models that could be using 
from something very basic as scikit learn or like GBM or, or XGBoost to stuff more complex and requiring you know TensorFlow or PyTorch or other uh, frameworks. Um, but in general, no matter what the framework, there will be a machine learning model being served that could be made part of this fraud detection pipeline. And the final step, as I mentioned, is to check, um, is to make a decision on whether the fraud level, but the predicted fraud level of this transaction is good enough to stop or accept that transaction. Another kind of common check that happens at this stage is, you know, the machine learning model typically is trained on historical data. And as we know, frosters are very crafty. They will try to uh, come up with new uh, patterns of fraud. And those may not be captured by your machine learning model. So in a way, is it's also common to see the combination of machine learning and emerging fraud patterns that have been identified. So transactions can be checked against both the machine learning and these emerging fraud patterns that will not capture and will not be captured by your machine learning models. And when you think about from an architect perspective, you know, design a real-time fraud detection system, you need a, a number of technologies to build this fraud detection pipeline. Uh, in terms of uh, real-time uh, compute, you need a prediction service that essentially takes requests, retrieve the online features, apply that feature engineering that we mentioned and run the model. You also need a fast data store, something, uh, a place with low, um, low latency uh, store that I can bring uh, features about the customers, the merchant, anything that can help me that provide that context for that transaction. And stream processing is another key uh, ingredient in real-time uh, machine learning. Uh, events that happen just before the transaction could be an indication of, of behavior or intention. So if, for example, if we know that uh, a given credit card has been used, overused uh, over the last, uh, say, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, however time frame, just before that transaction is actually being processed, that could provide valuable cues to the model that this car is potentially being used over the uh, you know the recency, the frequency, or the monetary value that is standard for this customer. So doing this requires a range of technologies today. So if you look at the model serving side, you will find uh, tools like TensorFlow, PyTorch Serve, NVIDIA Triton, and in general, machine learning model inference type solutions that just cater for serving the model. You have technologies like Redis or RockDB that they're just simply a fast data store. Cassandra is also usually found in this. But the key is that they only do that in memory uh, store. And on the stream processing side, you have technologies like Apache Flink and streaming. They're great for just that purpose, processing events in near real time. Uh, in addition, there are systems that are usually involved in machine learning solutions like Kafka pro providing that stream of uh, constant stream of, uh, of events, Apache Spark to doing uh, some offline um, training uh, of models. And, and of course, you have the cloud providers that each one of them provides numerous services for each of these three boxes if you wanted to implement a prediction server or server machine learning model, there are multiple ways of achieving that in AWS. And, and, and similar for each of those, those three boxes, the cloud providers will cater for different variations of service and different products. So the end result is that inevitably a system that is complex by, by, by nature, but also the fact that you need multiple technologies means that you need to integrate them. Uh, inevitably, in terms of performance, there will be an increased latency. Uh, the fact that multiple pieces of this fraud detection pipeline run on different infrastructure means that you need to communicate and means that network hops, which is taking data from one place to another to continue the next step in the pipeline. Now, 
with Hazelcast, the key difference is that these capabilities of stream processing, fast data store, and calculating data on as part of your fraud detection pipeline come into a single runtime. And that not only simplifies the architecture, but also lowers the TCO. If you are running in this single runtime that is able to take advantage of all the um, cores and memory of the given infrastructure, you're essentially um, providing all the technical capabilities needed, single runtime in less infrastructure. And, and the key to, to achieve that is, you know, is co-locating that fraud detection pipeline with the fast data store and running those on the same node. So, and when you co-locate that computation and memory, then you, then you're that that's that's the key of uh, of improving the performance of a fraud detection pipeline. Now, I want to go back again to this to this fraud detection pipeline because next we'll be looking at okay, how do we implement a pipeline like this with Hazelcast? So as you can see, these are the five stages that I described earlier, and so now let's go into. Uh, see how, how we could implement this. So as the, for those of you who are familiar with Hazelcast, you know that a pipeline in JET is implemented in Java. So what you can see now on the screen is how we start defining that pipeline. And in this case, we're using Kafka as a, as a source of transactions, but essentially the pipeline would be, will require some sort of, uh, uh, of transactions to initiate the fraud detection pipeline. In this case, we're using Kafka just as a uh, as an example. So, and you, as you can see there, we have connectors for Kafka that takes the connectivity parameters to communicate with the Kafka broker, Kafka topic, and simply take a transaction into the pipeline. The next step is about contextualizing, it's about the features, the customer features, the merchant features, and the real-time features. So assuming that we store the merchant and customer features on Hazelcast, uh, the next step is to marry that incoming transaction with data about that customer or that merchant that we already know, and it's stored in Hazelcast. So that is shown in you know, the this map using my map and this map using I map. The first one retrieves merchant features, the second one, customer features. Towards the bottom of this segment of code, what we're looking at, looking at is calculating the distance between the customer. Now that we know who the customer is and what who the merchant is, we can calculate what's the distance between those two, provided that of course we store the, the, the coordinates of, of both. And we have that as features in Hazelcast. So we can, do this kind of real-time calculations. The next step is about transforming that data into an, a format that is uh, appropriate to the machine learning algorithm that we're using. So in this case, I'm just showing how some categorical features, how we can map a gender or job code or job description into a number. That is the number that uh, was used to train the machine learning model. At the predict stage, if we look at the left side of this screen, that's the uh, that's that bit of uh, code is adding is in is is adding is is invoking that machine learning fraud detection model. So we're using something called map using service, which in essence allows you to do one of two things is in a separate class, you can define ex essentially what that get a fraud probability method actually does. And in our case, we're using Onyx. And Onyx is, um, is a framework, it's a machine, it's, it's an open source framework where models that are built and trained in 
all of the major machine learning frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow, or Scikit-Learn can be converted from those environments into a, into a generic way to represent what that model actually does, the computation that that model actually does. Once we have that kind of interoperable way of expressing the, the, the computation of that model, we can run that model in any other platform. We can run it on the phone, you can run it in Java, you can run it in any other platform that is completely different to the, to the, the, the platform with which the data scientists use to run it, to train the model in the first place. In this case, what we're looking at on the right-hand side is the use of Onyx. And, and, and the, the key functionality here is essentially mapping that input data into Onyx tensor format, calling the model, and then getting the output of that model and storing that somewhere that could be used in the pipeline at a later stage. <clears throat> Excuse me. So finally, once we get the prediction from the machine learning model, we can take action on that. In this simple case, all I'm doing is I'm storing the result of that prediction into an IMAP in memory in Hazelcast. But in a real production scenario, this is the point where you would want to check against uh, emerging fraud patterns. You, you maybe want to do check, you know, what is the threshold at which you or the bank decides that uh, the probability of your fraud is high enough to stop the transaction. And based on that, you can also start uh, another pipeline to communicate with the customer, send, send uh, an SMS message advising a potential fraud or requesting additional uh, verification that that transaction is, is legitimate. So here, the uh, essentially the card provider has complete uh, independence and, and, and free will to, to decide what, what makes uh, sense you know, with, uh, uh, in, in terms of how they use the machine learning model output to determine the, ne the, the next action. So with that said, uh, I think I've spoken already describing what this fraud detection pipeline is and how it looks like in the code. I'd like to show it uh, to you in action. So I've um, preloaded uh, some transactions in, into a Kafka system, and I'm going to submit um, a couple of Hazelcast pipeline jobs, ones that will load the merchant and customer feature data, so that is a store already available in memory. And the second job will be the fraud detection pipeline, that pipeline that we just been going through. So. As that pipeline is deployed, you will see those transactions uh, being processed by the system. And we'll be able to check that in Hazelcast Management Center. So that way that this is a tool for admins where you can see, admins can see what is the current state of the uh, Hazelcast cluster. And also I want to show you how you could analyze. So remember that in my act stage, I just stored the, uh, the predictions into, a, in, into Hazelcast. So I could analyze those predictions basically and, and get a, to get a better sense of what fraud, where and when fraud is happening. So I wanted to also spend a little bit of time there. So let's go and show you Hazelcast. Uh, so you can see this is an empty cluster. There's no data in it. There are no streaming jobs. And so my next step is let's load the uh, customer emergent features and the fraud detection pipeline. So do that. As you can see, we're loading the customer emergent features and some other uh, data that I'm using as part of my transformation. So if I look back at Hazelcast, you can see, see my customer map, 10,000 customers, merchant map, 787 uh, merchants. And you can start seeing the prediction results that we save in the act stage of the pipeline that they're currently being saved into Hazelcast. And we can confirm that by looking at the jobs. You can see a fraud detection inference job. 
And as you can see, almost 100,000 transactions have gone through in the last minute. And they've, and they've gone into the system and they've gone out of the system, meaning that we've created predictions for them and stored them into IMAP. So now that we that fraud detection has run, we can take a look from a kind of a business perspective to see what, what is the fraud situation looking like now. So I built this dashboard entirely uh, with Python uh, using Streamlit. And what I'm doing is using SQL to query the data, th those predictions that were generated by the pipeline, I'm using SQL to query that data. And each, so behind each of these numbers, you can see if you hover over the uh, uh, information uh, bubble, you can see what was the query that was used. And as you can see, very simple SQL for anyone who's familiar with it, they will totally recognize how simple each of these numbers was generated. It's just simple uh, SQL statement where we're selecting from that IMAP where the fraud probability hits you know, certain thresholds. We say 80%. So if we want to say define uh, fraud as the model telling you more than 80% uh, probability of fraud. In that case, we can see that there are 447 potentially fraudulent transactions. And if we look at the data and the distribution, let's say by city, these are customers in these cities. We can, you can also see this bubble chart here plots the, um, the value of the transactions, the total value of the transactions and the total number of transactions that are, potent, that are suspected fraud. So if I look at this in this city, customers in this city, there's only one transaction that is for 25, almost $25,000. And it's reported, it's been reported in somewhere in West Virginia. Similarly, if I take, if I look at a, let's say, take a look at a distribution by customer. So if I take that customer, we have nine transactions being reported from somewhere near uh, Minneapolis around in, in Minnesota and where for that customer I think this, let's try Lynn a uh, different customer we can see the distribution of transactions we can see that there's also 7,000 a total of 7,000 dollars on five transactions reported from these locations so what I want to convey here is that you can analyze that transaction those these transactions in real time as fraud is 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 highlighted and for the more traditional sql users you can also use sql as you would expect so i can use something like let's focus on this customer amy white and if i do that i see number of transactions there but if i want to focus on the ones that are highly likely to be fraud let's say fraud probability higher than 0 0.81 now we're looking at only seven transactions and these are the values these are each of those transactions i can do a simple check you know just checking the average amount in these transactions around a th just over a thousand eleven hundred dollars and if i look at transactions that are less likely to be fraud i can immediately see that the average transaction for this person is about seventy dollars so we have there is something odd going on here so and this kind of analysis uh, usually uh, fraud investigation teams uh, can do similar tools to this so with that, uh, I'd like to go back to the presentation and just to focus, just to check on, well, before before I move on to that, uh, to the next slide, uh, if I was any question, anything that has come up? Uh, yeah, so a couple of questions here. Uh, so first one is in terms of 
building the model. So this is not relevant to Hezekiah. You know, you can build it anywhere and then you can basically deploy it using Hezekiah. Is that correct? Yes, that, that is correct. And then for this uh, fraud uh, detection demo, what I did is I trained the model in light GBM, uh, which if, is a gradient boosting, uh, boosted uh, algorithm. So if you're familiar with XGBoost, light GBM is in a similar kind category. So I trained that model with light GBM, export that model into Onyx, and then use Java runtime uh, for Onyx to run that model inside the JVM. And as I mentioned, the, 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 this is one approach, uh, but um, many customers may already have uh, models deployed out there. Maybe they, they use um, AWS, maybe they use Google Vertex AI or some other uh, model training and, and serving infrastructure. In that case, they will have some machine learning endpoint that is serving their model. In that case, what we can use is instead of, you know, we, we can just call out from our pipeline to that machine learning model, get a prediction, and then continue the execution of the pipeline. Okay, thank you. Yep. And I have some more, and not in this slide, but in the next slide, I have some more options that I didn't go through today, but it can also be good to, you know, give you some more insights into how you could deploy a model with Hazelcast. So kind of to summarize how you could use Hazelcast in a real-time machine learning scenario, you could use, uh, you can store your features in Hazelcast fast data store, in memory distributed, and essentially you can store all of that data that you already know about your customers and merchants and keep it there in low latency. Uh, you can use streaming events to calculate and aggregate data over small periods of time and then use that as input, turn that as a feature that your machine learning model can use. So how many transactions have been executed in the last 30 minutes, the total value of those, uh, is this a normal pattern for this particular customer? So that kind of features, you can only calculate in near real time using stream processing. And in terms of running the model, you can you have options. You can run the Hazelcast, uh, you can run the model in the Hazelcast node, like we did in this case using technology like Onyx, or you can also call out the machine learning endpoint uh, you can use Hazelcast Stream in SQL to identify emerging fraud patterns and actually include those in your fraud detection pipeline. And of course, you can craft rules to determine you know, where your fraud threshold, your tolerance to, to, to risk is based on the, the output of machine learning models and emerging patterns of fraud. So, and the final thing is that with Hazelcast, you can simplify that real-time machine learning ser model serving. It's a single runtime, so therefore it has all the advantages of reducing that complexity, improve scalability and performance, and lower your TCO. Essentially, you're doing a lot more with a lot less resource. And before I, I close this, uh, I wanted to go a little bit deeper into the options for deploying machine learning models into Hazelcast. So as we saw today, I described Onyx, and, and Onyx is, is great in the sense that you know, your data scientists can use any framework. They can use TensorFlow, PyTorch, XGBoost, like GBM, Scikit-Learn, you name it. That's their tool. That's, their, that, that's the space and, and the frameworks that they're used to. And they can take their output, the models, the train models, and convert that into the Onyx format. Once they're in the Onyx formats, we can execute that in JVM using the Onyx runtime. Uh, one of the key advantages of using Onyx runtime is that not only the machine learning model is running on JVM, but also you can take advantage of GPU accelerations that is available to the Hazelcast node. Uh, in, in Onyx, you're able to specify, you know, run this model using this particular hardware accelerator. So those options are already there. Then gRPC, uh, this, this would be the option to call out a machine learning model that is being served outside of Hazelcast. Could be a site container, it could be a machine learning endpoint. 
there's a third option, which is map using Python. And in this option, uh, each Hazelcast node could provide a secure and managed Python runtime in which you load, the, your, load your model, create a function that serves that model, and then that communication between the Hazelcast pipeline and that model is, is done for you. So all you need to provide is a function that encapsulates your model, uh, run the inference, and return some, some results. So this is another option. Uh, we could explore that in a future uh, Twitch session if folks are interested. And there, there's also the Deep Java library, which is an approach similar to Onyx, in which you would use a machine learn, a, a deep learning model, NLP, a computer vision, uh, and, and essentially run it in the JVM or, or in the same node as Hazelcast is running. And with that, I mean, the, the, there are the uh, there are multiple options to bring your machine learning and AI models into Hazelcast apps. And and before I disappear, I'd like to point you to uh, a set of very useful resources that definitely helped me uh, get started with with Hazelcast. And, and also information about Onyx, information about working with pipelines, stream processing, SQL. Uh, our documentation is excellent, so, and, and, and so is our training center. So feel free to find all that information there. I will be posting a, this, this, uh, a repo with all the code that you've seen today, so you can reproduce this at, at, in your own time. Um, if you're already here, that means that you're already on, on Twitch and you're already uh, tuning in with us. Also, feel free to reach out on Slack and yeah, happy to share and see any of your uh, machine learning ideas and how we use Hazelcast with it. That's great. That's great, Ed. Thanks very much. Uh, it's, it's really interesting to see how you can basically deploy any machine learning model uh, using Hazelcast. Uh, particularly the simplicity of, um, you know, deploying um, this instead of using multiple tools. I think this is key element when, you know, you want to do some machine learning inference. Um, so I've seen last slide uh, for the link. So maybe it's not possible, but is it possible just to share where this code uh, currently on GitHub, like the actual repository? So people who are interested can access it. Yeah, I will be uh, open it up and uh, right now it's, it's internal, uh, but I'll be definitely open this up uh, later today. So that's good. So the so other question reach out, to, reach out to us in the community and, and we'll post that. I think there's a dedicated channel within the community, within the Slack community to machine learning. I'll post that uh, the repository at the deck as well there. Um, yeah, I think if you're interested in, you know, accessing the code or if you have any question, as I mentioned, that's we have a specific channel for machine learning on Slack. So feel free to join and ask any question you may have. Um, I got a question here. So this model can be used in any time series use case. So if it's not fraud detection, uh, do you think it is possible? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as long as you build your model in you know one of these frameworks, uh, and it, so this is in terms of using Onyx, right? So if you're using Onyx, as long as you build your model in any supported framework uh, in Python, and yeah, you should be able to generate an Onyx representation of it and you'll be able to run it. Another choice, if, you, if, if for some reason that approach was not possible, you could try our Python runtime uh, mm -hmm. approach uh, in which, yes, as long as your model is written in Python, whatever time series a library you're using essentially you can you can run any 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 logic or any model as long as they run in python we'll be able to run it and call it so, so, yeah, so there are two yeah. options yeah i expect to see more use cases after this live stream i think people who are interested in machine learning want to apply different use cases and yeah it will be interesting so if you manage to create a project um, different from fraud detection, or if you have same experience in fraud detection, feel free um, to share your 
code with our community on Slack. So that would be great addition. Um, yeah, so th thanks very much, Ed, for uh, your time and for this great presentation. Just to remind everyone uh, to go and sign up for our on-conference event in London. So this event will be hybrid. So if you are in the UK, in London, uh, you are welcome to join in person. If you are anywhere else, feel free to join. Uh, virtually, uh, we will run a training workshop about real-time stream processing, and obviously uh, some concepts of machine learning also will be applicable as well. So this is the link you need to register. Obviously, our Slack community channel as well. So feel free to join and uh, leave any question you may have for Ed or anything about machine learning. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you soon. Thanks, Ed. Cheers. <laughs>